Thank you, Jesus. My co-laborers in the faith, how many of us are tired of battles that seem to go on and on and on? Seem to like never end. They just go another battle after another battle. So many of us hope for a better tomorrow while hopelessness wreaks havoc on our social and economic ladder of self-worth. Man, I ain't got enough money. I can't do this. Oh, man, I done messed up. I can't go to church. Look how I'm uh, Some folks don't go to church because they don't have money to put me off. From. Amen? I'd rather you come. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I said so many of us, we hope for a better tomorrow. Yet hopelessness wreaks havoc on our social and economic ladder of self-worth. The Bible declares in Romans 5, verse 5, Hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad yes, in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, yes, which is given unto us. Amen? Yes. Somebody say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. God wants to demonstrate miracles in our lives. Amen. God wants to bless us with a miracle in our life today. The testimonies from God should exalt God and not ourselves. We always try to make ourselves look good in testimonies, don't we? How many know testimonies may not be cute, but they're courageous? Testimonies stink sometimes. Testimonies show the ugly side of our flesh, amen? But how many know testimonies should show the good side of God? Testimonies from God should exalt God and not ourselves. My brothers and sisters, hear me this morning. Faith is knowing God will do it. Yes. Even when everything around you is saying, no, he won't. Yeah. Faith is knowing that God will do it for you. Yeah. Even when everything else around you say, no, he won't. How can I pay this and I don't have a job? How can I keep going on and I messed up yesterday? Faith says everything that's going on around you, you can still be victorious. You can still come out the head and not the tail. Yes. Are you listening to me this morning? <laughs> Faith says, yes, God will. When everything around you is saying, no, he won't. Amen. You see how them boogers living? You see what they did? I, I'm not walking by faith. I mean, I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. Yes. I'm not worried about what I'm seeing. I'm worried about what God already spoke through the bygone millenniums. Amen. Hallelujah. The good news this morning is you don't have to fake it till you make it. The good news is you don't have to fake it to make it. Put a smile on even though you're hurting. No, but you do have to stop pretending and just start surrendering. I say today, you don't have to fake it till you make it, but you got to stop pretending and start surrendering. If you're hurting, just tell you, yeah, I'm hurting. Can I get some prayer? I heard somebody try to stop you from getting in the prayer line. You go in the prayer line to every church service. Listen, I'll go two times if I have to. Three times if I have to. You can't tell it like I can tell it. I'm still hurting. I'm still struggling. Ain't nobody trying to be cute. I'm trying to get delivered. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? How many came here to be delivered this morning? How many came for a word then this morning? The good news is you don't have to fake it till you make it, Internet Saints. Telephone Saints. You don't have to fake it till you make it, but you do have to stop pretending and just start surrendering. After you have done all you can possibly do, let God do what only He can do. The Spirit of the Lord declares, Ten keys to going from an empty vessel to a full vessel. Come on, turn to your brother or sister and say, I need those ten keys. To go from an empty vessel to a full vessel. That's the title of the sermon if you're taking notes. I'm coming from an example. Did you not hear the story? Did you not hear where they said the fishermen had left their boat? And they were washing their nets. How many know the boat was empty? <laughs> but how many know when Jesus got done with it, the boat was full? That's right. I'm here to tell you, you may have come empty today, but you're going to leave full. Amen. 
empty with hurt, empty with shame. But God's going to fill you up this morning with grace and mercy and justice and truth. And most of all, he's going to touch you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How do I go from an empty vessel to a full vessel? My God. Come on by faith say, I'm going to get what I came for. My God. Ten keys to going from an empty vessel to a full vessel. Verse 1 declares, and it came to pass. How many know it came to pass means something will happen over and over and over and over again. Can I tell you why? Because the devil's not quite sure you're really delivered yet. Oh, he's going to tempt you with that beer again. He's going to tempt you with those cigarettes. He's going to tempt you with those drugs. And it came to pass me something will happen over and over and over again. Because I don't care how bad you sound, the devil is not quite convinced you all that in a bag of chips. Yes. Uh, can I prove it to you, sister? Yes. Yes. Peter, running to the tomb, looking at everything, amen. Peter saw 5,000 people fast. Peter walked on water. Peter was a bad man until that lady at the fire said, aren't you one of him? Yeah. No, I don't know the man. I don't know the mother, the son of a, the, oh, I don't know him. The devil not truly convinced. We all know how to talk a good game, don't we? Well, brother, sister, all you got to do is pray, and then you will find yourself next week choked and get choked by the devil. That's right. Last week you encouraged somebody else, but today you need somebody to encourage you. Why? Because it came to pass. Something will happen over and over and over again. What is it that's going to happen over and over again? The Bible says that it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, him is Jesus Christ. They pressed on him to hear the word of God. The press means the crowd overtook him. The, they crowded him. Why did they crowd him, Saint? Because they had a great desire to hear the word of God. Yes. See, we got folks come to, to church not to hear the word of God, but to debate the word of God. Amen. We got folks that will come to challenge the validity of the word of God. That's right. Well, did God really say we came down? Well, did God say that we really can't do this? The Bible says they came to hear the word of God. Yeah. Not to debate with it, not to challenge it, not to question it, but they needed a word to change their life. Yes. These people believe that the word was able to change their condition. Is there anybody this morning that believes the word can change your condition? Yes. Yes. They pressed on him so hard, elbow to elbow. The, when I read that, I said, my God, have you ever been to Mardi Gras? In a French Quarter in New Orleans, you'll know what I'm talking about. You can't even walk. The crowd just moves you. Amen? For those that don't know, I grew up in uh, New Orleans. And I mean, as far as, as the eye can see, there's just waves of people. And people do stuff they shouldn't do. They pick pockets you. They pull you up. They, they take your clothes. It's just a mass chaos. But these folks were there not for the Mardi Gras, not for the red beans and rice, uh, not for the barbecue. They were there to hear the word of God. That's right. The question today, what are you here for this morning? Somebody made me come? I already don't want to be here. You still going to hear something. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Preach it, Pastor. You still going to hear something. That's right. The Bible says they came to hear the word of God. Why? Because they were determined for change. Yes. They were determined for change. This message is for anybody this morning that has a determination for change. Amen. This message is for somebody that has a desire to change in their heart and don't know how to get there. I got ten keys for you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. How, what are some of the things we need change in our life, saying? One is our finances. Yep. One is our job status. The other is our lifestyle. I'm tired of living like I'm living. Anybody felt like your prayers are going unanswered, like they're hitting a seal? Ain't nobody mad but the devil, amen? One thing we need to change is our home life. 
I'm amazed at so many Christians that 